There is no better way to really express your care for someone than, of course, to make them a meal. And the most appreciated meals are those which look as well as taste. Hello, welcome to this one-on-one -on -one session on how to plate. There are obviously a variety of meals and many things that you may have interest in plating. Spaghetti is such a popular meal, and it is one of the more confounding meals to learn how to plate. So, today, I'll be showing you how to elegantly plate a serving of spaghetti. The theory behind elegant plating is that it helps to increase your enjoyment of food. So, if food comes to us in an unpresentable manner, we're less likely to find it delicious no matter what our taste buds and smell says. But if it comes to us and is pleasing to the eye, then it can add and enhance our experience with our taste buds, with the mouth feel, and even just taking in the aroma of the food. So, one of the first things to consider when looking to plate is what you are going to use as your foundation, which will be your plate. For today, I have chosen this lovely black plate. Provides a lovely contrast to our pasta and will allow the brightness of our sauce and our garnish garnishes, should I say, to shine. So Obviously, most often you'll just use what you have at home, but if you are looking for something specific, usually you want something that's rimless. You want to increase the illusion of blank space. You'll notice a lot of times in fine dining establishments there's a large amount of blank space on the plate. It just creates a more beautiful aesthetic and gives you more to work with across the plate. For me personally, I generally prefer either a black or a white dish. Any other color can detract from the dish, unless it's very specific to that dish. Black and white are very safe from one dish to the next. So, let us go ahead and get started before our food cools down. 
Now, what makes spaghetti so difficult to plate? If we look at it, is it just looks like a bit of a jumbled mess. Maybe it just looks like some brains if you put some sauce on. There are two ways to plate spaghetti. Um, bolognese or spaghetti with spaghetti sauce, depending on how you want to put your sauce on. So this method is just leaving the spaghetti plain. So what we're going to first need, what a lot of people have around and use very rarely, is a carving fork. Want something with the two tines because we're going to do a wrapping motion like this. And this is going to help us to bring everything into alignment and pre create an elegant roll in the middle. We're going to center this on the plate. The composition of a dish is part of how you determine how it's going to look on the plate. So with this particular method, I like it across the center, it can often be very pleasing to do things a little bit off center. But today, I'm not going so, I'm just going to place our pasta here. Kind of get the serving. Just separate out the amount that you want. And now, just going, you can kind of untangle this as you're going through. We'll create a nice little curve there. So you can see it curves up quite nicely. We have a few ends off that direction. And then we just place that. Once we've got it placed there, you'll want to move some of the edges around so that we don't have little pieces sticking out as much. If you're very anal, you can cut off the ends, but I personally never like to waste any. So that's how we get just a nice kind of log shape. This allows us to still have plenty of blank space within our plate. So we have lots of different options here. Now the sauce I have here is a kangaroo spaghetti sauce. It's been made with kangaroo mince, which is a very healthy meat. It doesn't have the same issues that you get from red meat, so it's a very desirable meat. This has a very, shall we say, acidic take to it because it has balsamic vinegar pretty heavy-handed in there. Now you'll notice the tool that I've brought for this is just a small soup spoon. To get more refined and elegant plating, you want smaller tools so you have more control over where all of your different meal elements end up. Set that back down. We're just 
going to start. We'll kind of spoon this on top. Now, how you want to go about it can really determine what you do here. So, you may want to really smother it so it's falling off the edge. You may want to add a little bit of sauce around. Excuse me, just got some on my finger. You may want to put some sauce around when you have uh, a white plate, it can look very elegant to pull a bit of the oil from your sauce and do a drop and a slide, a very traditional, elegant element that's included in five-star restaurants. But I think for this one, that I just want to keep it all centered so we have this nice look. So you can move things so you're happy with the placement as well. Just to kind of shape it. But overall, we have a nice, elegant shape here in the middle. Now, when garnishing a spaghetti, I always must have parmesan cheese Parmesan cheese. I'm going to freshly grate it. With your grating, probably want to move our plate out of the way because you want to be in control of where your cheese goes. You don't want it to go to chance. So just do our grating like this. Probably don't need a significant amount. But you see these little pieces coming off? We now have control of those, so we could even start since we know this is a clean surface, we could even start by sprinkling those. So now we'll move our plate back to our center position. There. And what I like to do is empty this cheese into my non-dominant hand so that I so now we'll just begin to sprinkle this very gently I want it to stay towards the center and then we'll just do a few little falling off I don't want it to go too far from the center. So, so there we have that. Now we'll put the cheese down. With the basil garnish, I always want fresh basil. This is actually a still live plant, which will soon be put into the ground. It still has its roots intact. Now you have to decide what size you want to go for. Do you want to go more for the larger leaf or the smaller leaves? I like to take off a whole top like this. So we have quite a few leaves here. and varying sizes. So you can play around with that. You can put 
that in the middle or you could put it off to one side but I really liked that in the middle it really sinks with our overall design and you can try and straighten that out and there you can see we have a very elegant look you can place our leaves just fiddle around with it until you're super happy. Now, and we'll just make sure cheese isn't straight from where it should be. Now you can leave it like this. This would be a wonderful way to serve it. You can see it looks very elegant and beautiful. We have a nice plate of lovely spaghetti but I always like to add a little bit of a side on as well which is why I brought us some bread too cut couple pieces of bread and you can kind of these are from just a nice little rustic baguette and you just want to look around to see where they might sit well now you can see where you might want to push this over a little bit and you can go like that or when you were still in the center, you could go one on each side. When you have that blank space, it really opens up the options. But I think for this one, that looks the best. Just a slightly off center. And a little garnish of bread on the top. Now the final thing that you want to do is just kind of clear up any crumbs of cheese or bread. Help your plate look clean. So you have that beautiful and elegant color. And that is how you elegantly plate